Today, I'm on my way to meet a particular woman. Nancy Morejon is a Cuban poet who has contributed enormously to writing in Cuba and has important literary positions as director of the Union magazine, member of the Cuban Academy of the Cuban Writers Association attached to the Union of Writers and Artists of Cuba. She is the voice of his ancestors who suffered from slavery and greatly influenced his poetic voice. She is our guest today in From Havana. Thank you so much to agree to do this interview. It's a pleasure for me, for all the team of From Havana, to have you here. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Okay. Do you remember how did you start writing? The moment in when writing came into your life? Yes, I do. I remember, as far as I remember, I was very little. I was a child, but I used to concentrate myself looking at things, especially ants walking down, up, and I used to spend time, maybe hours, taking a look to the, the ants walk. So I remember this was the kind of mood I would uh, need to concentrate. It's a, an, a concentration exercise. When you are in front of the white page, you have to be concentrated, otherwise you cannot write. So that's how I remember myself reading or you know, looking at the sunset. How is that process? Once you are concentrated, do you sit down and write, or you could be in the street and, and poems come to your mind and you write it uh, down? Having concentration is a great, great thing. It's an experience, a whole experience. There are many writings about the experience of concentrating. If you are not concentrated, as I told you, it's impossible to write. And um, I will never forget that uh, I used to put words, ugly or beautiful words. It didn't matter. What mattered was the possibility of expressing myself which is in the base of my very first poems. And uh, your, your question is very interesting because it deals with inspiration. In modern times, there are many writers that don't believe in inspiration. I trust in inspiration. But the point is that you have to be trained, and you have to read, and you have to study. It's not only inspiration. And in these cases, I'm always remembering a, a quotation by Ernest Hemingway, who used to say that, that he trusted in inspiration, but he said, I enjoy inspiration when it comes, while I am writing. Do you write from experience, or do you use your Im imagination? Both. First of all, we have to say that poetry is a very weird manner of writing. Because you have to have a feeling, you have to have a reaction, you have to have faith in reality and in yourself. Narratives, short stories or novels, whatever, it's completely different because it's like you are gathering things, putting together experiences of other people in the case of poetry, usually you speak about your own. Uh, uh, but you have to think that inspiration is not only the, the magic touch of a poem. You have to go back to the, your first draft, take it out from the drawer, and, and then you come over and, and you use your technique, because technique exists. It's very important to know that. You have said uh, so many times that learning a language and translating from that language is really important for a writer. It's the best literary workshop. How, why? Because, you know, I've read a lot when I was a teenager. I've read a lot of uh, Cesare Pavese, an Italian poet and, and writer and translator. So uh, across his book about uh, writer's craft, he wrote many beautiful statements about translating and about writing. They go together like a, 
you know, birds of a feather fly together. It's something like that. When you translate, you are remarking the writing of someone else. But you have to know not only words, you have to have an idea of the whole cultural frame of that writer. So translating is one of the great experiences for a writer. So that's why I, I'm very proud to say that I am a translator. And when I was a teenager, I used to make my living from translating. Now, what is the difference, which is the difference between being a, a writer and being a woman of letter? Great, great, great question. I wouldn't dare to, to, to say the difference I find in that because I do believe in the fact that it, it, being a woman is a great flawed, a great richness for writing. Poems or essays or anything else, it, it's very important. So gen because gender in our times are very special. And I think that in, 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 the, in the field of literature and writing, this is a, a keynote. You have said that you didn't have um, uh, one and only a unique influence in your writing, but how important was, let's say, Nicolas Guillén in your career, in your development? A master, a master. There are many other things because sometimes you have influences that you cannot realize where they come from. In the case of Guillén, I know perfectly because I did have the privilege of working together with him. I wrote around three books on his poetry and his essays and as a journalist. And uh, my black poems wouldn't, wouldn't dare to have life without, without him. That's truth. But the fact that makes, makes a difference is just that my, the gender. I'm a woman, he was not. So I, I saw many things that I could bring to my my papers and my writing, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, excited, because I did that. It was, I add a little, a little magic touch to that. The first time you were published, how's the feeling of, of knowing yourself as a published author? It's a, it was a joy. And I remember the very, very little small press who did my, my very first two books, El Puente. It was the experience of young writers, you know, that gathered in, uh, uh, in this small press just to exist, because the, the most uh, known and prestigious uh, presses were in the hands of uh, uh, writers older than ourselves. So these two first books are important to me. But the, um, the experience was between the university. I used to attend the university, the Faculty of Letters, Escuela de Letras, for us. And I did attend a kind of workshop with Mirta Aguirre. I will never forget that Guillermo Rodriguez Rivera was my partner, was my, my friend there. And both of us, we used to make exercises for this workshop. And Mirta said, Imagine things, and then you drop them in your white papers. So that's what you have to do. To do. And she taught us to know middle-aged poets, middle-aged beautiful pieces of Spain, because your mother tongue is very important. Spanish is our mother tongue. We in, in Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Dominican Republic, we speak Spanish. We do write in Spanish. Although in the case of the of, uh, Dominican Republic, there should be some, uh, let's say, some experiences of Creole languages brought to the country by Haitians. With your third book, you presented that third book into a contest. And you stopped being Nancy for a moment. And you, you became, if, if I don't, if I'm not wrong, an Igdes, Palais de Montsecure, something like that. Yeah, it's a line by Stéphane Mallarmé, uh, because the jury was a very sophisticated jury, a wonderful one. 
Uh, it was, there was Nicolás Guillén, Lezama Lima, Regino Pedroso, José Agustín Goitizolo, Roque Dalton, Jaime Augusto Shelley, and Yanis Rizos, the Greek poet, very well known and very admired in our, in our times. So I wanted to charm the jury, of course, and I've choiced this line by Mallarmé. What's your nickname? Uh, that, that was the line, in Negres parle de Montségué. So they say yes, uh, but I was not in town. I was just making a journey, a very interesting journey, in the mountains, in the eastern part of Cuba, in the north of Oriente. And uh, there I received the, the news that I has been awarded. It was my mother who attended the ceremony and took the prize in my behalf. But for instance, for Jose Agustin Goitisolo, the Spaniard, Catalan writer, he always thought that I was my mother. Because many years after he came, he attended a congress in Havana at the Palacio de Convenciones, and uh, we were introduced. And he said, but you are younger than ever. You are younger. He said, no, I'm not younger. You met my mother, who came in my behalf to, to take the, the award. We started to laugh, and we started a very beautiful friendship. You said, we talked about that a few minutes ago, that it's important for a poet, and for a writer in general, to translate from a language and learn from a language. But how important is for a poet to read? It's essential. But I said this not only for poets or writers. I said this when I go to a class anywhere, at a university, school, I'm always teaching students, and I tell them, you should learn a foreign language. In my case, for instance, French language, it's a foreign language. Uh, and it is always very, because it's a confrontation. You write in your own, but if you know another language, you can compare and you, 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 you realize that the resources of a language do not fit with the other one. It's a great exercise. It's very, very important. At the same time, it's a very humble and lucky way of making money. Because if you translate, a translator is always uh, needed anywhere. So that's important. It, it, it puts you all over uh, the possibilities of exchanging. That's one of the best things that happen to a translator. So if you are a writer, it's much better, much better. If you translate and you write and you have to make the difference be between your own writing and your own translating. In modern, time, modern times, people are reading less now. Uh, it's a fact. But how do you see uh, Cuban actual poetry? That's well, uh, poetry is in good health good health. I don't uh, think very much about the, the different ways of reading. Because one thing is, if, if you read books, that's a way in our times. Modern times make, makes you read in, in front of a screen. When you are in front of, of a laptop or, or in front of a computer, you are reading. And that's important. We cannot deny that. You are reading, you are in touch with information. Sometimes it is not that good in the sense that information is not, it's not lawful, but it's information. Uh, to read an e-book, whatever, I, I'm not against e-books, but we are a country fighting against an embargo, which sometimes doesn't allow us to have uh, energetic or the, the electric energy that we need. And sometimes it's very difficult to, you know, to, to read. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm, I am praising reading. So you have to learn to read and to write in the ways that you can reach them. Because the important is that the reader reach a way of reading uh, and a way of writing, of course. And in our times, we don't what I reject sometimes of cybernetics is that 
sometimes people think they are the only way. I don't think they are the only way. They are very modern, very useful, but they are not the only thing we have to reach reading and, and knowledge because we have to put together the needing of knowledge. Knowledge and information are friends, yeah. but they are not the same thing. I know that you also draw and paint. Is that a way to, to you know, to create more? You have the need of, of being yeah. creating always, all the time. You are right, and it's a very sharp uh, question. Um, I want to tell you about the, how I started to do, do so. When you're a child, three years old, four years old, you know, all children draw. But I did start drawing in a, in a serious way during my mother's sickness. My mother was sick and there were many blackouts in the country. It was a so-called special period. So when uh, blackouts were over, I started to write. I could not because I was in a stress. And I started to make those figures, those objects, those things that I draw. They were interested in once. Talking with Aitana Alberti, yeah. you know, Rafael Alberti's daughter, she said, but these drawings are very beautiful. I'm going to send them to uh, uh, a small m magazine, uh, Litoral, in the south of Spain. And the drawings were accepted, and they were, so she said, you have to make an exhibition. So I will never forget how help, helpful it was Abel Prieto, who is a, a, a drawer, was he, he, he draws very well, I love yeah. his drawings. He said, yes, we have to do that. And, and, and they encouraged me, and we did my very first exhibition at the National Theater. At, um, at the lobby of one of the theaters in the National Theater. And I will never forget the, the help of the assistants of Nisi Agüero, Pablo Armando Fernandez, and Aitana Alberti, who introduced the exhibition, talking about my drawings and my poems. Now, how important have been and is the Caribbean in your work and in your life? Cuba is the Caribbean. Although, you know, Alfredo de Vara that I I'm, I'm, I'm very honored to, to bring to, to this interview. He used to say, Cuba is impossible to, to admit, to accept a definition, because Cuba is Cuba. But at the same time, I would add, Cuba is the Caribbean. Although there are many traces of uh, a very special conditions of Cuba. Cuba is uh, uh, exceptional in the middle of an archipelic culture, which is because there are many islands. Cuba is not one island. Cuba is like Guadalupe, which is a, an archipel. So uh, Cuba is very difficult to define, very difficult. We are very, especially for our bold character, our sense of resistance, and our ac acception, we accept that we come from Spaniards and from Africans and from Chinese people. The coolies that came ever since the, the 19th century. So we are a melting pot in the good sense of the term. You've had periods of literary silence, decades even. Um, what were they due to? Why? Well, that's the difference between writing and publishing. I did not publish during around 12 years. But it didn't mean that I was silenced. I was writing, doing things, doing research. Uh, during this time, I, 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 I made research on Nicolas Guillén, other poets. So I was always active. I was always writing, not poems, but essays, and, and sometimes very barely, but poems. Now, you have said that um, poetry exists all, only in the eyes of the, of the reader, and that um, a writer exists when he fills in the blank uh, spaces. So do you write for yourself? A writer writes for oneself or for others? And how much of self-reflexive has? It depends on time. I like your questions. 
It depends on times. When I was nine years old, I used to write for myself. All things I could not talk with my parents went to the white paper. After many years, you know, having 25 years old, I do not write only for myself. Although your ego, everybody has an ego, enjoy your writing, so it's for you. But I, I, I try at least to reach the reader, to reach other interests, to reflect in my writings many other feelings, many other behaviors. So that's uh, it's like a balance. You have said that your vision of the world have been permeated by, by three conditions, being a woman, being a black woman, and being Cuban. Um, how can you delve into how this affect your work? And, and there's such thing as a woman, a black woman poetry? Well, let me tell you, yeah, uh, uh, I like your question uh, because it helps to understand what I have been saying. You are a human being, first of all. A human being that came to the world through your mother and your father. So you may have the eyes of your grandfather and have the hands of your mother. Because a human being is some, someone that get born from a tradition, although from two people, a mother and a father. Uh, I feel myself like a human being. I have been requested about this thing. For instance, for, for my poem, Black Woman, once in Puerto Rico in 1979, I was in a university talking, I've read, and someone, uh, a teenager, a girl, raised the question. Did you write black woman more as a black or more as a woman? And I've said, I wrote it as Nancy Morejon because I am an individual and it matters. So if this poem is useful for good goals in terms of race equality or gender equality, welcome. I, I, I'm excited about it, you know. But at the time I wrote the poem and the poem itself, because poetry has irrational processes. I cannot say now, many years passed by, that I wrote it knowing what, what was going to happen. No, it's not fair to tell you so, although you're very young. I would have talked to you, yes, I did this and make me the heroine. No, I wrote it from a dream. I make like a note of my dreams and it came through. Thank you so much, it's been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to talk with such a poet as you. Thank you so much. My pleasure, my very personal pleasure. <laughs>
only on Telesur. We have been present in all the events stirring our people. United for each transmission and in tune we bet on a new Latin American vision. Now we are also accompanied by the Caribbean people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Each day working for the best understanding and communication. Tell us who the new source from South America and the Caribbean. Discover the cultural diversity that defines a continent. The place where art and tradition are part of the same nucleus. Artistic explorations. Valleys. Fridays, only on Tourist World.